you know, hey, how do I start, you know, I want to be a customizer, how do I start doing this, you know, stuff like that. And like, um... <laughs> Penny! You messed up my Penny! You're laying on the camera. <laughs> My name is Jake Dancliffs from San Antonio, Texas. I customize sneakers for a living. Let's make today our bitch. So my brother was uh, 10 years older than me and at a very early age, I noticed he had way cooler shoes than my little Velcro shoes were. And mom's an artist, so she already started me at an early age. By the time I'm like four years old, I was already bringing those two interests together. I would make my own designs, like I'd hole punch them and then I'd have like binders full of just these shoe designs. I like to fiddle around with art, or I used to, but I've never, never been serious with it like he is. I've always done a little stuff. I have a little bit of creativity. <laughs> he always had to have something to do fiddling, you know. And then when he was about four and talking, he would tell us that he was going to be an archaeologist and a drawer. Fifth grade ish? <laughs> With a wine cooler. Watch <laughs> out. <laughs> He's got some talent. He sees things that, you know, how did you come up with that? It's just. He's got ideas that, well, like, when are you gonna run out of those ideas? They just keep coming, you know, thankfully. <laughs> High school, I remember getting, going to the thrift store and getting a pair of Air Force One mids and going to, it was before I knew what Angelus was, before I knew what leather prepping or anything like that was, I thought any paint would just stick. And I went and bought like, it was a real chalky kind of paint. And I painted them all green with a blue swoosh and it flaked off on the first wear, like all of it. What was cool about it was when we were done with it, like they looked cool, they were edged up nice, and they were, this was the wrong paint. You know, major breakthrough custom for me, I'd end up doing a shoe for LeBron, and he got the shoes, he posted the shoes and shout me out, and then wore them on media day, which got tons of coverage, and then they ended up on the cover of Sports Illustrated. So like that was, that was big, yeah. And very early on into this and kind of solidified that this is what I need to be doing full time. All right, so we got a Pinnacle, a Pinnacle Air Max one. I'm gonna make it into something that kids like these days. I don't like to pigeonhole myself into things. Like if I'm going to do something, I wanna be able to do like all facets of it with sneakers it's it's not just paint you know like it's the actual you know construction of the shoe too let's dig through these bins i i pull my inspiration from the most unlikely areas everything from like you know car builders and like all those like you know in like jesse james like monster garage was really big like i was really into that especially now since i do more like uh, matching up of a lot of things and like even like soul swaps and like buildings from scratch and i see so many similarities now that's like what we'll do with putting like ultra boost soles on you know a pair of speziales or something i always pride myself on uh putting out quality work Well, Jake specializes in everything. And that's what kind of inspires me because I mean, his thirst for like learning all kinds of stuff. I mean, he wants to do everything. He's very self-motivated. He wants to be the last man standing. He wants to, he wants to inspire. I mean, and that's what, that's what I enjoy. Like, Jake pushes the boundaries and not only pushes the industry, like everybody, and it just elevates everybody. I'm extremely reckless, but it's the end product. 
is what matters. Every new show I watch, every new car I see designed, every song that comes out, you know, every day new stuff happens, new things are made, and it's all just more inspiration. The biggest thing is when I try to do shoes, I try to do something on every shoe that I've never done before. If I haven't done that yet on a shoe, then the shoe isn't done. Again, never done this before, but we're removing this swoosh, so we want to kind of hide where the where the holes were. So this is <laughs> sheetrock wall putty mixed with some water to fill the holes, and then hopefully. Hopefully, it'll dry and uh, we'll be able to just like scrape the surface, get everything off the surface, but leave everything in the holes and then just paint over. Actually, looks pretty good. <laughs> So I got tagged on a post uh, that was actually on my high school's uh, Facebook page. It was uh, of the Vans Custom Culture Contest was going on and, and that East Central was chosen as one of the high schools. They pick several hundred uh, high schools from around the country to do, to like have their art class do custom shoes. We're going out to our alma mater today to help these kids get a leg up on the competition, I guess. It's great, but yeah, these, these are great. Having an airbrush will just make things go by quicker. From a what do you need standpoint though, a shoe to start. And then um, these, these paints and, and an idea. That's really it, you know? <laughs> One thing I would recommend that would be cool to really give you that like factory look, this logo here paint that a solid color, you know, and then put your own some kind of logo on there. Well, I mean, I think it's a good start. I think it's a great idea. I think, I think you can definitely do a lot with it. But you want it like crispy to where it doesn't it looks like it's printed and not hand painted. That's that would be a good way for y'all to like have an edge up on the competition that a lot of other schools probably aren't gonna have. But seeing faces I haven't seen in a long time was cool and yeah, it was it was awesome. I've been on the Angeles team for a while, and I guess it's kind of finally my time to to do something, you know, and uh, kind of give back and starting to think about, you know, what custom shoe would be good for me to do a giveaway on. Naturally, I'm known for Air Max, so let's do it on an Air Max One. That's my favorite silhouette to work on. What is popular right now? So we figured nobody's done an Air Max One in the Travis Scott, you know, like Jordan One colorway yet, and Nobody's adapted that large backwards swoosh on an Air Max One. It'd be a smooth take on a on a new, like a new classic. I think that's going to be a very memorable shoe. So I think we picked a good uh, a good silhouette and a good shoe to tell a good story with. So I think we're going to get a lot of good reactions from this. We'll probably get a lot of hate too, but that's what this is about. You can't make everybody happy. Usually the first response that I tell people when they ask like, either they'll say, what's the first step? How do you do this? Whatever it is, like the first response pretty much on every single one is that I would do, I say is just get dirty. Finding out, you know, your own way of doing things and making mistakes and learning from the mistakes that you made is gonna teach you way more than me 
telling you something, you know, on IG. Being able to like have things at your, you know, at your reach in San Antonio is hard. So like I was always having to try to find my own ways of doing things and teaching myself and sourcing materials and tools and stuff. I've used really weird and unconventional things and, and definitely methods <laughs> as well. So yeah, it's kind of like a, you know, the MacGyver, you know, of a, that's gonna go way over the young people's heads. MacGyver. <laughs> I think if you were to say like a brand in general that like represents Texas, that's what we're. And here we are. Thank you so much. You too. Mm -hmm. Don't mess with Texas.